Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Josh Shetty. Uh, just want to say thank you for all the people that's been um, uh, watching my videos, reposting. Uh, thank you so much, and feel free to keep sharing, keep posting. If you feel like these videos are benefiting anyone or will benefit your friends, feel free to go to my Facebook groups and uh, add your friends to that group so we can branch out these videos. And if you're on YouTube, feel free to comment and share. But <clears throat> let's get right into this video. Uh, the name of this video is called The Audacity of Hope. I know it's a play on words of uh, uh, Barack Obama's book, but I'm going to talk about the different components on how we have the audacity to hope in things that's hopeless, hoping to things that's been that's only given us false hope. Uh, a lot of us in our in our world today, and it bothers me because we have such a hope in man, we have such a hope in people and things, aspirations and dreams, that we have no hope in God. We don't trust God because. We have been caught up on our senses and what we see that we have been so uh, brainwashed to deceive and to believe in people that's only given us false hopes or given us or the dreams that give us a false aspiration to chase after. That's why one of the greatest quotes that I've heard so far or when it comes to hope, it says the grand essentials of happiness is something to do, something to love and something to hope for. That's the thing about this is that we as Christians and we as people we are not bound by happiness. Happiness is an unconditional type of feeling. Happiness is saying that I'm happy due to certain conditions in my life. See, joy is the opposite of happiness, which means it's unconditional. That means it's not based upon conditions. Because our hope exceeds this happiness on this world because our hope is in God. Our hope is in loving and living in Him. That's why we have to understand the satanic agenda and uh, giving us false hopes, putting pawns in front of us, putting different people in front of us. To give us this false sense of hope and grasping and gravitating to these people that we don't gravitate to God. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, the unseen force, is our tangible substance of something that we're hoping for. See, God is, when God comes to your life, He drastically changed the statue of the content of your heart. He, that's why the Bible says, they that delight themselves in the Lord, He gives them the desires of their heart. Now, that scripture is not saying just because you praise God and go to church and you say you delight in him, that he's going to give you desires. No, what God is saying that he will mold and mend your heart into desiring what he initially wanted you to decide, desire. He wants you to hope in him, hope in what he wants you to do, not hope in his world. That's why some of us, we have so much hope in different careers, different jobs. We have hopes in you know, uh, the president, uh, political figures, athletes, we have so much hope in what man says that we have no hope in what God says in his word. Because the moment that our hope, the Bible says, the, uh, when hope deferred makes the heart sick. And Satan knows that if I put people and have them gravitate to having these false hopes in them, when their hope gets deferred, it will make them sick. The greatest deception that's about to come to America is this false hope of happiness, this false hope of change. And with this false hope is going to come this derailment of many people into being brainwashed and deceived and initially having their hearts broken. And when you have a broken heart, they're, they're, they're prey to be preyed on. So this is what you got to understand is the greatest thing Satan does is to, for people to come into your life to give you a false hope. Saying, you know what, I'm going to do this for you. You know what, this is what I have to offer you. And you bite on it. You waste your money. You put your money to these TBN preachers. And you put all your money in hoping that you're going to get healed by them. When you don't even go to God's word who's the source of healing. Or who's the source of your financial needs. That's why the Bible says he takes, he preserves his faithful. He don't preserve, see he preserves those who are faithful to him. The Bible you got to understand is, is if your hope is in anything but God, you will be derailed and deceived in this world. Because what's about to happen to America is about to change. This world society with this new world order stuff and how everything is about to drastically change. If your hope is in anything but God, your heart will fail. That's why the Bible says many hearts will fail them. Because, because of the changes that's going on. If you don't understand now, that right now, I better have my hope in God. Because if the world changes, if the world crumbles, you crumble. Whatever your source is, whatever you're connected to, if that crumbles... You crumble. Why have? Why should we have the audacity, the aggressiveness, or the boldness, or the fearlessness to hope in something that is eventually going to crumble? Why hope so much in this life, which is only this much, when we should have our hopes in the endeavors of what I can do for eternity? 
Why get so caught up on the houses, the cars, the careers, the people, this trophy wife, and the luxuries of life, hoping so much after this dream that when that dream flutters away, it doesn't happen, you stand in there crushed, crumbled. We have to understand that we should have the audacity to hope in God, not the audacity to hope in man, people, things, careers, dreams. Our audacity, our boldness, our fearlessness are saying, you know what, I don't hope in this present life which is only but a vapor. It could be here today and gone tomorrow, but I have the audacity, the boldness to live for God and hope in Him and trust in Him. Now, I know it's tough. I know it's tough to hope in God, to trust in God, but you got to understand in this Christian walk, we have been deceived into thinking that this Christian life is something comfortable. We have been deceived into thinking that this Christian life is, uh, if I put my money into this TBN character, that I'm going to get some money back. Or if I put my faith in this healer, that I'm going to get healed. We have been so brainwashed into thinking that Christianity is some uh, quick way out, the, the, like one of these quick rich schemes. It's not that. The Bible says you're going to suffer persecution, you're going to go through trials, you're going to go through things, but be of good cheer because he has overcome them all. We have to understand that once we became a Christian, if you're a true Christian, is that we have entered into war. This is nothing to play with. Our audacity, our boldness should be for God because the moment that he has come into our hearts and into our lives, we became his property and his soldiers. And if we hope in anything besides him, that hope in anything else has the potential to provide for you, not God. Provision comes into who your source is. If the world crumbles today, when the dollar bill is going to fall, which is going to fall, what's your trust going to be in? Is your trust going to be in man? Or is your trust going to be in God? Just like Elijah. God took care of him. Over there, he fed him by the brook. He fed him by ravens. God took care of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God takes care of the faithful. So today, have the audacity to hope in God. Don't have the audacity to hope in man because they will fail you. Man will fail you over and over and over again. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure be also. Put your treasure, lay up treasures up in heaven where neither moth nor rust can destroy, where thieves can't break in and steal. Don't put treasure on this earth where anything can happen and then all of a sudden your state of your happiness is unbalanced. Today, self-examine your heart. Look inside of that. And what are you having the audacity to hope for? Thank you for watching my video today. I might do a part two of this video, but uh, it's been really bothering me on how we have hope so much in man and have so much hope in things that my fear is, that my concern is, is that when that system crumbles, when that lifestyle crumbles, where are you going to be at? Because the moment that crumbles, you will crumble. See, God is eternally, he's eternal. He will never fall. He never changes. He'll never break. He'll never lie. I'd rather put my stock and my investments in him. Because absence from the body is present with him. I don't want to put so much stock and so much investments in this world that when I die, I stand before him, he says, depart from me. For you never trusted in me. You never cared for me. You was never concerned about what I wanted you to do. Think today. What do you have the audacity to hope for? Have a blessed day.